Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Military in Hawaii. We like to study the military in Hawaii. We want to see the interface between the military and the community in general. So we look at uh, some of the officers who have retired. We look at some of the officers running big installations that hire a lot of local people. And today we're looking at transition centers. This is very interesting. It's also an interface uh, on the DOE level where kids meet kids and teachers meet kids that have come from out of town with military families and transition means um, coming and going to DOE, which is very important. And we have for this discussion, uh, Cherry Okahara and Kim Sanders. Cherry uh, is a transition center person and uh, Kim Sanders is a, it's a principal, but they work together on tra transition centers. Welcome to the show, you guys. Thank you for having us. So um, I just wanna ask you one question before we begin our picture show. <clears throat> Ready? Why, yes. why do we care about tra transition centers? Why is it important? Why is it important to the community in Hawaii? Why is it important to the military community that you know, lives and works here, okay? I'll, I'll take any answer. Do you want me to take it away? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it, transition centers are so important to our children, um, for them to feel like they belong uh, right away when they first come to a new place. Um, they're stressed as it is with a move. And so to go into a new school um, and not know anyone, um, it's a little frightening. So it's nice to have a place where they know they can go and make friends and right away belong. Yeah, what would you add to that, Cherry? I would say that transition centers have been able to help all students, including our local transient English language learners, um, our housing insecure, and of course, our military dependents. You mean homeless? Yes. Oh, very important. Gee, what an important function that is. Now, you guys are, the transition center uh, facilities are funded by a federal grant. Can you talk about that, Cherry? Well, I wanted to start with some of the history of how transition centers came about in Hawaii. Uh, currently about 11,000 or about 7% of our student population here in Hawaii are military dependents. These students face uh, unique uh, transition challenges in a unique cultural setting. In 1998, a plan to form a task force to determine how the military could facilitate quality education in Hawaii public schools was initiated. The Joint Venture Education Forum, or JVEF, was established in 1999 to develop an equally committed and involved partnership in pursuit of a quality education for all of Hawaii's children. Um, JVEF received, with the help of Senator Daniel Inoy, received earmarks um, through those years. In 2010, through JVEF, uh, the the DODA appropriated funds to Hawaii Department of School Department of Education schools to start transition centers, and so we credit schools um, Radford and Lelehua High Schools, both highly military impacted schools serving mainly um, Army, Air Force, and Navy families for developing these wonderful transition centers and programs. They have shared their best practices with other schools that in turn have started their own, such as Eva Makai, which Principal Sanders is a is principal mm. of. Mm. So how many are there altogether in Hawaii? There's quite a bit, actually, I don't have that number, but I can tell you for the grant, um, in 2017, in partnership with community partners, the Hawaii DOE committed $250,000 annually for four years using federal impact aid funds for transition center creation, improvements, technology, furnishings, and special events. To date, 50 public schools from all across four counties have benefited from this effort, which we named the Takai Transition Center Network in honor of the late Congressman K. Mark Takai, who was a staunch advocate for Hawaii's um, students and supporter of military dependents throughout his career. Totally appropriate. Mark Takai appeared in our shows a number, a number of times. So, so Kim, Kim, can we talk about how, how what happens in a transition center? What happens, uh, you know, on all sides of the transaction? So um, uh, last year, we started our first transition center here in uh, Eva Mackay, and it was a little bit different than it is now because of the pandemic. Um, but um, what we did was right away as a student comes in, 
We um, welcome them with a lay. The students take them around to their classes. They have lunch with them. Um, they make sure right away they pull them in and, and that they have a, a, you know, they feel special here. Um, it was really interesting because um, uh, the students have started to develop exactly what it looks like. So we have about, we originally had about 65 students that wanted to be what we call ambassadors, um, where they're the ambassadors to our school, welcoming these new students. Oh, what um, a lovely it, idea, what a lovely idea. It touches never, me that you, that you set it up that way. Yeah, so now we have about 35 that are, are definitely in it and, and you know, want to be there at the, the full force of it. Um, and they've decided that they wanted to have workshops. Um, they've started different things. They have games during lunch. Um, so again, just pulling those in, we have lunch bunch where they, ha they have games and, and activities. So everybody feels like they're important and that they, they belong. So is this just uh, for welcoming or does this go, you know, at least in concept through the entire term? What, 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 how long does it last? So it lasts the whole year. We, we check in with them all year long. Um, this year has been a little bit different because um, we are at distance learning, but our students were still creative. Um, our coordinator um, is Lolita Ayala, and she has been amazing. Like today was um, a time at 1115, we had what we call a lunch bunch. We invited some of the new students. I got a chance to talk with them, find out their hobbies, um, what they like. Um, and then again, our students are, are welcoming them through virtual um, Google Classrooms or Google Meets um, and just making sure that they're feeling good about Hawaii. They're learning a little bit more about Hawaii from the students that are already here. You know, I'm looking at uh, uh, Lewis Carroll and the and the, the uh, you know the ghost of Christmas past. What w was it like without the transition centers? Uh, what problems emerged, and how have the transition centers solved those problems, Kim? Um, I think, um, and again, having been a military child myself and been in those positions, I did. I worried about who was I going to eat lunch with? Was I going to be sitting by myself? What was going to happen? Was I going to be able to find my glasses? Um, so, um, and seeing it through my children's eyes also every time we moved, um, I felt that it was something that was super important here at our school to make sure that as soon as they come, they, they have friends right away and they feel like, like they're part of the school and, and they get involved faster because we know that when students are involved in schools, they do better academically. So um, again, right away, um, I think that was what was important for me to be able to do. It was interesting because um, this last year, I decided to shadow a student that was new just to see what it was like. So I dressed as a student. The kids got a pretty good kick out of it, me coming to their classes um, with this new student. <laughs> But it was, you, you couldn't have done that for us today. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so it was really great because, again, I got to see how our children interacted with the new student. And it was marvelous. It was so nice to see um, that it, it, it has evolved into something where we, we do look at the social emotional learning of our children and how important it is in every school. Is it perfect or are there, are there wrinkles? Um, there are sometimes few wrinkles because, again, there are some shy students that, you know, back off, you know, at first, but then once they realize how genuine our, our students are, they come around and they, and they want to be involved in it. What a lovely idea. By the way, I said Lewis Carroll. I was wrong. It was Charles Dickens wrote the uh, Ghost of Christmas Past, <laughs> A Christmas Story. I, I think that was it. Um, anyway, okay, so let's do a, uh, let's do a, a, a picture show, Cherry. Um, in fact, you can both join and describe the pictures. We have a few of them, and I want to sort of give people the flavor of, of how you operate these rooms and, and how the social engagement works in these rooms among mm -hmm. the people who are involved. So let's start the picture show now. Principal Sanders, you want to take this one? Yes. So this is, this is our students. These are um, the ambassadors um, that started the Transition Center. And this was our dedication last year. And we were so lucky because Sammy Takai, uh, Mark Takai's um, uh, wife had shown up and, um, and actually um, cut the ribbon for us for our dedication for the Art Takai Center, which was really it just um, heartfelt by all of us. Um, so there's a picture of our Kaz, Kaz Tajima, um, and, um, and also um, 
our coordinator who um, works the with the students throughout the year. But they the students at this one, it was really great because they set up little um, stations for everyone that came to see what they do. And they have de-stress stations where they, they talk about de-stressing, you know, especially in middle school, some of our students stress over their grades and things like that. And, and they had one center on, on all about Hawaii and they talked about Musubi and how to make it, um, things like that that were really great. Okay, next one. This is a map of um, the schools that have benefited from the Takai Transition Center Network. So about, uh, I said about 50 schools have benefited so far from the grant funding throughout all four counties. Okay. And Let's we see. wanted to um, recognize some of our community partners that have assisted with the Transition Center uh, efforts. One of them is Hawaii Business Roundtable with the Kmart Takai Foundation and other generous sponsors as listed on, on that flyer from this year's Transition Center's Best Practices Conference. Um, we're able to bring together school staff and especially our students because it's important to hear from our student ambassadors and leaders of the student voice. So they've come together and um, Hawaii Business Roundtable with their generous efforts have put on a one day Transition Center's Best Practices Conference where we're able to uh, provide a sense of um, school community support, they find resources and just for the students and Transition Center coordinators who sometimes also play the role of the parent center networking um, group. And so they're able to share their activities and best practices at this conference. Mm -hmm. Valuable. And what started with that was um, schools started to ask Radford High School, Lelehua High School, and their transition centers and student ambassadors about their units of instruction. How are you doing your lunch bunch? How are you welcoming your students? So it was a way of saying, these are our students that we're uh, catering this program and the center around. However, what about folks that are catering to our housing um, insecure, our English language learners. So we wanted to be able to just say, not just military dependents need help with transition, all, student, all students need. Okay, what's this? This one is, um, we're fortunate to have had different schools throughout our Transition Center's Best Practices Conference uh, present. So some of uh, this one lists Kailua Intermediate, Lehua Elementary, and um, Hickam Elementary schools that have presented. In years past, we've also had Kapolei Middle, Pearl Harbor Kai Elementary, Kalahill High School, Solomon Elementary, um, and Eva Makai in, in the second year. So we're just trying to gather from all um, different high school, middle, and elementary levels and different student populations and how they help them. Oh, okay, here's another one. This is a great picture. This is our Pearl Harbor Kai um, students with our uh, superintendent, Dr. Christina Kishimoto and our deputy, um, Phyllis Unibasami. So at these transition centers, the schools that I have already presented in the previous years, they're allowed to have resource tables. And so they can go around, even though they're not presenting that year, they're still able to share their activities um, and best practices during that um, networking time. So this was the first one and we had it at the Hawaii Okinawan Center. And it was such a, a big event that um, Mr. Gary Kai and Hawaii Business Roundtable said, oh, we'll promote you to the Pumai Kai Ballrooms so that we could have actual um, group sessions um, divided. So it was, we were pleasantly surprised with the amount of folks that attended the first one. So um, that was with the group of students with Mr. Gary Kai. This is great because this is at Kalaheo High School. We wanna make sure that you know each of our complexes are sharing. So for example, um, this is that Kailua Kalaheo complex and they were able to open their transition center. And um, we have supporters like Mr. Um, James Sunday from Radford High School who was able to share their program and they were able to come in that day. We also have picture Ms. Kawi Lucas of Hawaii 3Rs and Kaz Complex Area Superintendent Lanelle Hibbs in that picture and other community supporters. Mm -hmm. This one is great because the Takai um, uh, 
family actually was able to attend this, they're calling it the Ohana Transition Center um, at Lehua Elementary and um, Congressman Sakai had, you know, ties to that community. That's where he was raised and where his children also attended school. So we wanted to feature that one. These are our principals and students that were participating in the student panel. That year we had um, Radford, uh, Pearl Harbor Kai and Lelihua administrators and, and students um, sharing their experiences during that panel. And it was moderated by Teresa Sanchez, also a wonderful supporter of this, this uh, effort. And this was at Hickam Elementary on Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam. We're not only supported by different community organizations and businesses, but the senior military um, folks. And we were really um, grateful that they took time out of their day to come and listen to the students and explain their center. So this was at the Hickam Elementary uh, Transition Center opening. This was at the uh, conference as well. We have Complex Area Superintendent uh, Robert Davis and Deputy Unibasami with the ambassadors from Radford and Lelihua. Okay, I think that's it, right? So let me ask you, how, how, uh, how long have you been doing this, Cherry? It sounds like it's quite a while already, huh? I became the Hawaii DOE military liaison in 2004 after having worked in um, the Hawaii P20 Partnerships for Education with the College and Career Readiness. I had a short stint with the Department of Transportation in all divisions, um, but I actually started my career at the Hawaii State Legislature working for former, former Senator Norman Sakamoto, and we were education and military affairs for some years. So I have quite a background and I actually did attend some joint venture education forums during my time there. Yeah, and you reminded me that you and I met at that time. I really liked him, by the way. I thought he was very, very good, yeah. Norman he, he, he was wonderful. And I also wanted to um, comment that during that time, we did create the Hawaii Medal of Honor with Congressman Sakai, honoring those, uh, those families. Yeah. So um, how much participation uh, is, comes from the military on this? We know we have the military kids and uh, you know, in at least one of those photographs, there were military officers involved, or personnel, I should say. Um, but how much, how much engagement um, do you have between the transition centers and um, you know, the commands of the various bases? They've been supportive in the sense of different transition center openings, but I feel that um, the principals have allowed senior military folks or even military families to come and see um, these transition centers. And I'm not sure, Principal Sanders, if any of the um, folks have been able to visit your school, but at the Joint Venture Education Forum meetings, we've discussed this um, effort and they're, they're full in support because transition is a quality of life issue for them as well. Yeah, let, let, me, let me turn to you, Kim. And, you know, we're in COVID. I don't want to remind you of anything unpleasant, but uh, that changes schools. It changes kids, it changes parents, it changes certainly uh, the teachers and the administrators and all that. And so how has COVID changed this program? How you, you mentioned before that now you were doing more uh, online with Zoom and, and various other uh, remote systems, but how has it changed the program? So um, that was, it was a challenge. Um, so one of the things that my coordinator um, suggested and I thought was a brilliant idea was to actually bring the families in and we do an orientation. So she spends about an hour with them, masks on, six feet distance, but we give a chance for the student to see the school because, you know, otherwise it's just, they see the outside and they don't know what it feels like to be inside the school. So we do give them a chance to come into the school with our coordinator. They go through a lot of the um, paperwork and things that are happening at our school. Um, and then, um, we um, uh, get a chance for the students to actually meet again virtually through a um, Google um, group they, they have. Um, but we've had um, also um, coffee mornings with the parents because we want the parents to be involved also and start getting involved in, in the school with, with their child and also feel 
like this is their home too. Um, and then some of the things that the students are doing, um, um, I, they, they sent me a, a whole little list. Um, they've been working on some murals that when they do come back, they're going to be painting on the walls that are welcome murals, um, which again, I love student work in our schools. Um, and then uh, they also have, um, again, the uh, um, something that they do for the students that are leaving too, because again, when students are leaving, it's also very heart-wrenching um, when we have to say goodbye. So they uh, designed, and I can show you real quick, they designed these little um, posters that they send to the students. Um, and, uh, and they, you know, just when they get to their new place, whatever, wherever they move to, um, they get a postcard from our students saying, how are you doing? You know, we miss you. And just, um, we, we keep that love going, you know, so. Um, oh, fabulous. It's a pen pal relationship uh, yeah. on into the years, uh, which is a real gift for everybody involved. Yeah. Um, so uh, is, this, is this kind of program, uh, you know, available in, uh, in schools on the mainland? Is this a national program we have here? Uh, and if so, is it being done the same way elsewhere? Um, you, you know, know I, I'll let Ch uh, Cherry tell you about that because I, she, she probably has more details on that. You know, we've been fortunate to present our transition center efforts at our Military Impacted Schools Association and our National Association of Federally Impacted Schools. Um, you know, this effort can be replicated throughout the, the nation as well as other schools. And so we've also was able to share it with our Department of Defense um, Education Activity Executive Director and the Pacific Director that's visited with Dr. Christina Kishimoto through the years. So they each time they've come, they've wanted to visit a transition center. So um, it's a program that I believe other schools throughout the country can learn from. Oh, fabulous. That's really valuable that we can export our best practices that way. You know, I, I was um, uh, going to ask you also uh, about, about the difference. I don't, I don't mean divisive difference, but uh, the difference between kids in the military, you know, kids who come from military rotations, you know, because every two years or so, the average uh, military person is, is, is re, is re uh, rotated. And um, when that happens, a kid go, goes with them. And then you have kids who actually, um, although it's stressful, I'm sure, but it's also pretty valuable. Uh, travel is broadening, isn't it? And these kids have been around even at very young ages. And, I, and I'm thinking that when they come to a school uh, where the kids have not necessarily been around, uh, there's an exchange going on. On the one hand, the, the local kids are saying, gee, I, that's terrific that he's been all over or she's been all over the world. And, and the, the kids who've been all over the world, they probably have a thrill by telling the local kids about their travels, you know? So it's a, it's a, it's a positive exchange, isn't it? Can you tell me about that, Kim? Um, yes, you know, that you, you hit it right, exactly right. Um, uh, there's different ones from different places. And, and it is, it's nice because we do have them share where they're from, because we want them to be proud of where they came from. And now we want them to be proud of where they're at. Um, but our, our students, it's kind of interesting. Um, one of the things that's been happening is the students that have been the ones that are moving are the ones that tend to want to be our ambassadors. They're the ones that want to give back to the students that, that help them transition into our school, which I think yeah, is- Yeah, you call it paying forward in the, in the nonprofit yeah. world, paying forward, yeah. <laughs> but also they bring a lot to us. So we've had yeah. students from other countries too. Um, many of our um, English learners um, that come in, they actually want to be part of the group and it's helped them with their English for one thing, but also we've had them as our speakers and actually some of our ambassadors that have been presenting at some of these transition centers um, meetings. And it's, it's really helped them to feel good about themselves when they're talking about how they transitioned and how people helped them and now they're helping um, back. So yeah, it's been, it's been awesome. You must get a lot of uh, gratification out of this psychic benefit. And, and I would imagine the same thing with the teachers who are involved because you, you see them, you know, this interaction and you see the, you know, the best things coming out of these kids. You know, it, it's, um, it's, a, it's an improvement in their life. It's, it's a special 
quality, special nutrient they're getting in, in the process of this transition. Uh, can you talk about that? Um, yeah, it, it just, I feel like it empowers them to feel, um, again, like they, that, they, that they're helping someone else. And I think that's what we all wanna do. We all want to, to help someone and, and make, make, make someone's life better. So again, that those service projects, those type of things, especially in middle school for our children to, to see how important it is to take care of each other, take care of our community, um, it's, it's, it's giant, yeah. Sounds like it. One other thing I wanted to cover, you know, you mentioned earlier, Cherry, that part, part of the, benef the group benefit in this is the, uh, the ones who, are, who, are not, who don't have homes. Um, and you, you have them in the schools and thus you have them in the transition centers as well. Uh, how does that work? Of course, I can imagine how it works mechanically, but how does that work socially? How does that work when they engage with the other kids, uh, the other kids coming, going, what have you, shoulder to shoulder? How does it work between the homeless kids and, and the other, and the student body in general? I think um, Principal Sanders mentioned the sense of belonging. You know, you want to be part of the school community. You want to be part of um, your grade level activities as well as the, the bigger community. Um, these students who come to our transition centers find a safe place to come, meet friends, have lunch, talk story with an adult, or just sit down. Like they just want to have a safe place because something happened in the playground or outside. We want all our students to feel that they can go to a transition center, no matter what um, families that they're coming from. So our housing insecure, I, I wanted to um, provide an example here on Oahu Central Middle and Waianae High Schools requested to use their funds to purchase washer and dryers for their um, housing insecure students. So that was wonderful that they're using that to cater towards that population. That's great. Uh, a couple of other things before we go, and that is, uh, you know, a lot of people in the community have, have uh, anxiety about COVID, about catching COVID, about having kids catch COVID and bring it home and all that. What, what are you seeing in that regard, Kim? What are you seeing? What, how are people expressing themselves on that point to you? Um, I suppose the kids have thoughts about that, but also their, their parents mm -hmm. and, your, and your teachers as well. We're, we're trying to stay as positive as we can and, and, and do as much as we can and, and in innovative ways. So we've done um, welcoming um, videos where our students, um, we do have a few come on. Um, we rotate some students on to the campus um, for learning. Um, I think uh, most of our families understand that we're trying to be safe and, and, and I think they're with us on that as far as um, it's, it's very important to take care of our community. Um, our teachers have been fabulous. They have been so good about um, de um, developing programs and working with our students on Google Classrooms that um, they, they haven't really missed a beat as far as having the students on. And I think they're really building those relationships with the students, even though they can't be close by. Um, they have time to where they're, they're talking to the students and finding out how they're doing. Um, but we are putting a lot of safety measures in place um, and, um, and getting ready to hopefully have them back on campus because we do miss them a lot. <laughs> it's not the same. <laughs> no, I'm sure. Yeah. So uh, Cherry, uh, you know, if, 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 if I were the legislature, sometimes I think I'll wake up one morning and be the legislature mm -hmm. and maybe the governor too. Um, it wouldn't be constitutional, but mm, <laughs> I, I could get some stuff done. I promise you that. What would you ask me to do to improve this program? What more, what additional support, what additional money would you ask me for? What, what additional connections would you ask me to provide? I think additional funding from either um, state government funding is definitely welcome. However, with the you know, budget restraints on, on both federal and state, we need to look, be creative and asking our business and community, as well as our military partners of how we can assist all students in transitioning, but helping all students, you know, get back to normal. And so this program of the transition center efforts with our schools, uh, we, we definitely want people to know more about it, but also that it can be replicated throughout the state. Um, I have other examples from Kauai, 
as well as on the big island of how they're using their transition centers to reach different populations. Um, and so I believe if we asked our state and um, federal legislators to support the effort, that would be wonderful. It reminds me of a show we did with um, Kehei Ke Ke High School uh, in uh, Kona, up, up, up Malka, Kona. And um, the, the, the uh, principal there, I think his name was Murakami, was a really wonderful well, man. Mr. Will Murakami. Yeah. Um, he was concerned that the parents of some of these Pacific Islanders didn't know how to balance their checkbooks or, or shop in the, in, the, in the store. And so he would, he would create classes for the kids on these mm -hmm. subjects, but then he would invite the parents too. <laughs> <laughs> and they would all come in and learn about the, you know, the fundamentals of living, you know, in Kona. And I thought that was really a wonderful idea. So what you're doing really is extendable, extensible um, to other, other, other functions. It's not only, you know, transitioning with military goods is transitioning in general. It's a, it's a welcome wagon kind of thing. Uh, where you, you know, it, it pays off in so many great rewards. Okay, we're, we're, we're about done, Kim. We're going to give you the last word. So what message you want to leave with our viewers today, Kim Sanders? Um, just um, keep supporting our transition centers and, um, and our children are, um, are really resilient. Brilliant. They're they're doing really well, and and I'm so proud of them, especially in the middle levels. Um, but I know that um, a lot of our um, our complex, Campbell Capelet, are all starting um, transition centers. Actually, down the road, Campbell High School um, is starting one this year. Um, so they see the value in it. So again, um, uh, keep supporting us, and then other schools that are out there. This is a great chance for you to start something. Um, for our children, for all children to feel welcomed and belonging in Hawaii. Yeah, our most important resource. So, you know, you, you, you should feel this. You should feel this, Kim and, and Cherry, that we're there with you. We're there in the room. Thank you so much. Kim Sanders, Cherry Okahara. Appreciate your coming on. Aloha.